We are set for tonight's main event here on Friday Night Fights, presented by Miller High Life from Savannah, Georgia. And taking center stage tonight, the tramp, Teron Millette, the former IBF junior welterweight champion of the world in 26 pro bouts. He has 18 knockouts. Teron Millette added the first belt to his resume against Freddie Pendleton in 1998, a USBA title. He would win the IBF championship against cool Vince Phillips. He'd defend the title against Virgil McClendon in July of 1999. Teron Millette would attack in this fight. And in this fight, he would suffer damage to both of his hands. Sure, he'd win a 12-round TKO, but not only was his right hand hurt, so was his left hand, and he would be stripped of his IBF title for not defending it. Teron Millette understood what boxing was all about. At first, I thought boxing was just about boxing, but I see now there's a lot of political stuff involved. I'm not bitter about it. I mean, God has his way of working things out, so what's gonna be, gonna be. So while Millette nursed his hand injury, Zab Judah would win the IBF title. And in August of 2000 in Connecticut, Judah would give Millette a chance to win the belt back. In round number one, both men went right at each other. Judah on the attack, but it was Millette with a counter shot that would score a knockdown. But things would change dramatically in round number two. Judah would go on the attack, and Millette would hit the canvas. In round number four, Judah's speed and Judah's power were too much. And this bout was stopped in the fourth round. Once again, Teron Millette had come up just a bit short. Millette says his shortcomings were his own fault. I didn't listen. Um, we went in with the right game plan. It's just I felt I, I was in a no-win situation. And uh, I just did what I thought I was good at, and that was slug. I just tried to knock him out instead of boxing the way we worked on. But I kept thinking, I want to knock him out. I didn't want to box him. I didn't want to jab. I didn't want to, you know, what I just wanted to hit him. And that was it. And that's why I messed up. Millette got back in the ring in April of this year, scoring an easy first round knockout of Mikkel Orr. Tonight he gets Luis Perez, a late sub for Carlos Gonzalez. The 28 year old, now living in California, has 16 wins and 12 knockouts in his career. But Teron Millette realizes that he has to get a victory tonight in order to move up the ranks. Basically, it has it. Um, but there's nothing I can do about it except fight and hope that one day, I guess, I will establish myself or people will look at me as, hey, that's Teron Millette, that's the world champion. And that, that that's a feeling I can't explain to be able to walk somewhere and have a, a young adult say, hey, Teron Millette, how you doing? You know, such and such, whatever. That, that's, that's a beautiful feeling. That is our main event. Now it is time to take you inside at As we take a look at tonight's main event, well, first for Luis Perez, Teddy, makes a little mistake in the that Teron Millette might be able to capitalize. Let's explain. Well, Perez is responsible defensively, hands up, does a pretty good job of slipping punches, but from the outside. I notice when he gets in close, he leans forward a little bit, leaves his hands up, and you can split his gloves with that tremendous uppercut that Bob Papa has. Like and Millette has a real good uppercut, and oh. he's got power. All right, now we have a piece of videotape that we're gonna take a look at. A problem that Teron Millette does have sometimes, Teddy, the jab gets a little bit lazy. Yes, it does. On the tape, you'll see that Millette sometimes pause with that jab like big power punches will do, and you can counter with the right hand right over that jab. Another thing that Millette does that you don't like that you saw on the tape, wide punches. Big punch of Millette. Sometimes he gets a little greedy, loads up a little bit. Oh, you're going to get a chance to land one. Two oh, this, in one show. This is Papa's birthday, by the way. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it. Millette will throw a real big wide punch, leave an opening for a straight punch right down the pipe. That's Perez's best shot to be able to be the underdog here and to pull an upset off against a former champion. We'll see how it unfolds tonight. Let's take a look at Luis Perez from California. And tonight's main event, born in Puerto Rico, been in California for about four years, weighed in at 143 pounds, 28 years of age, late sub for Carlos Gonzalez, 16-2-1 with 12 knockouts, coming off an eight-month layoff. Hasn't fought since September the 15th. He has lost two in a row. Teron Millette, the former IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, 32 years of age, 141 pounds. 
And he is 23 2 and 1 with 18 knockout victories. Georgia rules will be used for tonight's main event. Let's take one more look at them as Brian Stutz, the referee, gives final instructions. Three knockdown rule in effect, standing eight count as well. Fighter can be saved with the bell in the final round only. Only the referee may stop the fight. Accident to follow goes to the scorecards after half the rounds are complete. So Teron Milad, who had over 300 amateur bouts, favorite to make the 92 Olympic team, but was involved in a shooting in a carjack situation, lost to Stevie Johnston in the Olympic trials. Vernon Forrest would go on to represent the United States at the Barcelona Games. Perez, underdog here against a former world champion, Millet. But knows he's the taller man. And looks like he's got that on his mind to try to keep a little bit of distance and try to make Millet earn real estate. Perez has done some work in the gym with Marco Antonio Pereira and Asselino Freitas. Says he's learned a lot from both of those guys. How to prepare, stay disciplined, go about your work. Teddy mentioned, oh, good short right hand on the inside by Millet. Nice counter by Millet. Something was thrown at him. He felt it on the arm. He came right back. Caught, caught Perez hanging around a little too long. Perez although, is, although I'm sorry, Bob, although Perez has never been knocked out, he has been on the floor several times. Just going to say that. In fact, uh, three fights ago, he was down in the second round against Patrick Thorns. Fight he eventually won in the 11th round. Millet has been stopped twice, once by Zab Judah, once by Charmé Mitchell. Saw a second ago. Perez, when he got inside, leaned forward a little bit. And Millet tried to get off that uppercut. Didn't quite have the right distance. He was smothered a little bit. Millet might have to take a little half step back, Bob, when Perez leaned forward. Just to get the right distance, the right room, the right location for that uppercut. So far in spots, Perez with his height has gotten what he would want to get if he's going to have success here. He's gotten Millet, who can be wide. We talked about it. He's gotten Millet to reach a little bit. And as Teddy mentioned earlier in the evening, Perez, who hasn't fought in eight months, was scheduled to fight on a card tonight in California. He got this call earlier in the week, but he was getting ready to fight. So it's not your normal late sub that had to, you know, lose a lot of weight so on and so forth. This guy was ready to fight tonight. So one of the, exactly, one of the biggest disadvantages of being a late sub is you haven't had time to physically get in shape. Perez, having been getting prepared for this date anyway, is in shape. Another good counter right hand landed from Millet. Millet is a good puncher. Perez doesn't want to let him get too close. Tron huh. Millet likes to get things done in a hurry. 20 of his 26 fights have lasted four rounds or less, including each of his last two. One, a four-round knockout loss to Zab Judah, and then a first-round knockout of Mikkel Orr. A five, eight, and one fight. It was just something to get and let back in the ring after that loss to Judah. If I was to guess what the battle plans would be for both men, I would think that for Perez, the taller man, a man that does not have the power like the former champion Millet has, I would think Perez wants to use his height keep distance, and try to get counter opportunities. Try to stay away from the power zones of Millet. Get Millet to reach, which he does on occasion, and get clean openings. If I was Millet, I'd want to use my jab to close the distance without leaving myself open. Walk my way into position where I could unload one of those bombs that I possess in either hand. Perez has fought the state of Georgia before. Once as a pro, he had a draw. He was also a member 
of the Puerto Rican Olympic team in 1996 lost in his first bout at the Centennial Games. As you said, a good amateur progress, 160 or so bouts. Actually, has a win over Fernando Vargas in the 1995 Pan American Games in Argentina. The low is Perez, and he'll be cautioned for that by Brian Stutz. Okay, what would you like to see more of out of Perez? I'd like to see that jam to separate himself, get that distance being the taller man that he would want from Millet. And then maybe coerce Millet into throwing some wide punches and leave an opening.